Well met, Internet! You have discovered the Warrior Shrine once again. Congratulations. I am Django, the steward of the statues here, and I'm the only one keeping the candles lit in the shrine today. Um, what I have for you is a repurposed episode that we recorded a couple of weeks back with uh, Redman joining us, and for a litany of dumb reasons, it never made its way onto the channel. Um, in the episode, we mostly discussed uh, MKX's newest DLC characters and sort of talked about the state of the game in general. Uh, we also spent a decadent amount of time talking about story and lore. It's a shame, really. The Elder Lords weren't angry. They were just disappointed. But here we are. We lived to wake up X-Ray another day, so it's all good. Uh, so yeah. This episode, uh, was, it's actually one of the best Warrior Shrines we've done. I know we've only done 10, I think, but I'm glad it's finally getting to see the light of day. It was a lot of fun to do. Uh, big thanks to Temp, as always, and uh, Redman, for, Redman for delivering on the show's promise of actual gameplay analysis. God knows I'm not living up to that promise, but you know what? The future is brightest just before the dawn. The dawn, well, not the dawn of justice, you can tell when you hear this, we haven't seen it yet because, you know, we still got little stars in our eyes and we're so hopeful for the future. Oh, to be young again. Oh, boy. Uh, lastly, just to keep you guys uh, up to date with what's going on, we're getting ready to do a Killer Instinct-centric episode, uh, very similar to our Street Fighter V episode with a bunch of the Nethercast guys jumping in, talking about uh, Killer Instinct Season 3 and the series in general. So if you're all, at all into Killer Instinct, uh, Get hyped, son. I'm hype. I'm hype as shit. All right, that's enough out of me. I'm gonna shut up and get back to work now. You know, look too long at the statues, kids, and eventually you'll stand among them. <laughs> uh, enjoy the podcast, guys. See you at the next tournament. games in theory. It's the only building on the Nethercast campus where you're allowed to openly discuss your negative edge? Yes. Good, yeah. I thought that might be your problem. My name is Django. I would take care of you guys this evening, but before you get any drinks or anything, make some ear contact with Temp. What's up, Temp? Doing good. How's everybody doing today? Excellent. Fantastic. Was that, are you asking the audience or me? Or what are you doing? <laughs> asking our good friends Django and Redman slash down for LT. Yes, and we're joined today with the compatibility patch. You all get Redman for free today. It's amazing. What's up, Redman? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Glad to be here. Glad to have you back, yeah. Yeah. What's on that what's on that tier list of topics, Temp? We're going to start with the DLC. Everyone here is some form of Triborg enthusiast. So um, everyone's also kind of messing with different stuff. You're messing with Cyber Sub. I messed quite a bit with Smoke. Um, and Redman, you've spent pretty much time with everyone. including Sector, I think, predominantly, but also a lot of Smoke, I think, right? Yep. I uh, didn't try Cyrex that much, though. Doesn't fit my play style. Well, who's your favorite right now out of the Sector... And What's wrong with Cyrex? Not into volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> I really like That's the hovering. I, yeah. I don't really like the hovering bombs too much. They're kind of lame. All right, all right. Um, yeah, Sector is probably my favorite out of the out of the four. I dabbled a little bit with Cyber Sub before the nerfs, and uh, he's really retarded, really ridiculous character. So I didn't know they nerfed him. I heard about a new patch. But yeah, because that, NetherRealm writes all their fucking patch notes in, like, secret code, I can never fucking understand what they're yeah. saying. So tell me more about that. Yeah, um, they, they, like, still have the arcade inputs, which is so weird. They should just go to uh, the regular inputs. But anyway, um, they pretty much nerfed his uh, 1112, I think, the string. And uh, on knockdown, he uh, got a free bomb out in the corner, which uh, allowed him to go into a 50-50. Or uh, 
just like a dive kick into a 50-50 setup. So they nerfed oh. the hit hit advantage on that, and now uh, he doesn't get a free bomb out. But he can still use his uh, forward two, but he doesn't. You can wake up with armor now. So okay, so hmm. is he still dumb? Um, I think he's still pretty good. I think he's a really strong character who can still mix you up really easily, but uh, he just isn't as ridiculous. Okay, well, I guess, um, I mean, I picked Smoke because I'm a fanboy. Um, I guess, why did you guys pick your, your select, your respective robots? Um, well, I picked Sector because uh, he's uh, pretty fun. I uh, liked him the most. Smoke is too, like you said on the Nethercast, too vanilla. He's just really straightforward. I mean, he isn't anything like Smoke was in MK9, where he, had, he was so fun to use in MK9, and like the anti airing and everything, it's just like all that changed into a 50 50 character, which I don't really like using. Because MKX is like just a game of 50 50s. It's a fucking Easter basket of fucking 50 50s everywhere. Ex so. Exactly. I just, I miss, I miss walking back and forth in the mid range, and no one, not even Cryomancer can really do that anymore. The, the mid range is like the worst place ever in this game, I feel like. Yeah. And, I mean, it's not that you don't have options in the mid-range, but you can't just get in the mid-range and then do nothing. That'll get you killed so quickly. And Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I still really like MKX, but for very, very different reasons. But I don't know. I, I miss my standing, too. I miss my stamina-less phases. I miss my uh, my good smoke bomb. <laughs> Dude, a smoke bomb. So much startup. Uh, yeah, I know. And so... Uh, even in MK9, all the armoring through stuff, I was kind of torn over. I like the idea that offense isn't brain dead, and you got to be really selective with what you use. But yeah, um, I just hate the fact that the minute my opponent gets a bar of meter, a, half my shit doesn't work. Like maybe it's an exaggeration, but that drives me nuts. But but Django, you are a cyber sub guy. What drew you to the dive kick? What drew you to the? Uh, well, you know, I'm a Sub Zero fanboy, but he's also like. I, I, I don't i was i was not expecting him to come back i don't think anybody was no nope. he's like a he's like the he's probably the biggest troll character at this point he's like the ghost of christmas past it's like i'm never gonna let you forget me bitch <laughs> and, uh. and and he's still like and you play him and now that he's he's so he's got all this shit all this dirt and he can you know he's actually okay more than okay probably and you can beat people with him, it's it's even better. If they hate CyberSub, which, I mean, most people online probably don't hate CyberSub. But the, you know, the actual MK fans, a lot of them hate CyberSub. Yeah. That's why, that's why I play him. It's fun. Well, Grandmaster or CyberSub, which one are you gelling with better? Or which one do you oh, like? More Grandmaster, I don't play fast or rush down, which is why I'm having a hard time... <laughs> Like finding my way in with this character, I'm, I'm still very much learning him, and it's gonna be a while. I don't, I don't play rush down. I don't play fast. I actively try to slow matches down because my brain is dumb. Well, so, you know, I think Grandmaster was a good fit for for you from the very beginning because, in the scheme of characters you like to play, whether an MK9 sub or Conra, you seem to. You're really good at shutting down people's options and making them feel helpless, and that's a really good play style to employ. So, I don't know. I think Grandmaster is a super good fit for you. For oh that. yeah, he's definitely a much bigger fit. Like Cyber Sub is a guilty pleasure at this point. Like he's not going to be replacing any of my other main mains. Uh, Decade is the same thing. Like he doesn't have clones or anything, but I can throw shit out that makes you maybe doubt yourself for a second, and that's enough time to try to set something up or whatever. But yeah, Grandmaster's still way better. See, I was thinking, like, maybe if if only CyberSub had, you know, definitely not a clone. But if CyberSub had, like, you know, the Ice Parry, but it's still way too much because he's got the drones, he, he's he got dive kicks, he's got the all the shit where you do combos in, into the air, and then you dive kick back down to the ground and continue your fucking combos. It's, it's, it's really good. It looks really fun. It looks, it looks really awesome, but it's a little fast for me, so... It's gonna be a little while. <laughs> yeah, like I, had to, I was playing. I was playing um, Cyborg the other day with him. The first day I ever touched him, and eventually I just got to the point where like I had to stop playing Cyber Sub. I was still playing him, 
but I was only using, you know, like throws. <laughs> so I, the, the only way I could win the match at that point was by playing MKX, not by playing Cyber Sub, despite the character I was playing. Um, I'm just that, so glad it's not just me, because when I was using Smoke, it was like throw the character. Like, I was just throwing everyone, because I didn't know any of my fucking options yet. Well, so. And his throw is so hype. I love Drywork's throw, but anybody with a billion punches for a throw is cool. I don't know. That I'm kind of mixed on as well. I was hoping every what? robot would have their own throw. What? I, I hate the that. rock 'em sock 'em throw. Like, it just every. It has no <laughs> identity to it, you know? <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, it's a little, like, you don't see the, I guess, the character's own character <laughs> in the in the, in the the thing. Like, maybe if Sub-Zero finished it off with the Glacius Spike in his uppercut hand. I'm glad they got that Glacius Spike, by the way. That's fun. That is awesome. There's a lot of weird little killer instincty things in MKXL. Like, yeah, like, like the new combat cast. You have, like, a Riptor, you know, going to Alien, and then you got... Bo Raicho having the flame carpet, and now you have Cyber Sub having all the Glacius shit. It's kind of fun. I mean, really, Chainsaw Massacre is basically a really redneck version of Tusk, if you think about it, so... Yeah, no, I would Really agree. redneck version. <laughs> Extremely redneck. Extremely. <laughs> well, even the actual Tusk is a little redneck himself. You know, he's got the beard. He's got the Duck Dynasty shit going on with his hair. If so Tusk yeah. ran around like Leatherface does with his sword after he wins... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play the character already, but I would play him even harder at that point. Yeah, he does look really good. Um, I just, with the throw, it's like, what if every character had that mentality? Or when Scorpion does his throw, he just knees you in the gut like 14 times and then throws you on the ground. It just like, anyone could have done that. I mean, Kung Lao has a similar thing going on. But it's Ip Man, so he, since he's Asian and stuff, you know. That's racist. It's super racist. <laughs> <laughs> I make no excuses. No, you're absolutely right. That is true. But um, I don't know. I, I, right now, I'm, I, Cyborg's a little disappointing just because I wanted Smoke back. Smoke's not back. But it, all three variations, I feel like the neutral game just feels really weird to me. Not bad. Just weird. Triborg feels very... I don't know. Like, the core character doesn't feel very strong to me. I feel like I have to use a lot of gimmicky shit. Gimmick probably isn't the right word, because I think the, the, they're not gimmicks. They actually are going to be effective and will be effective for years, because they're just... They're decent mix-ups, but I just... I don't know. I want I want better yeah. fundamentals than this. Overall, I feel like the character... He doesn't feel like anyone else in the cast. It's really an odd character design, I think, but it works. Like, it's not how I expected Triborg to play maybe that's why i like sector so much sector actually looks and i guess possibly feels the way i imagine sector should feel you know yeah he's definitely the most honest character out of all of them yeah he's not he's not he doesn't have anything ridiculous but he's he has good tools to open the opponent up sort of like how he was in mk9 yeah mk9 sector was a a huge debate for well over a year on how good that character was or wasn't or what you're supposed to do with that character. And Yeah. I don't know. Um, but you, it sounds like you've had a lot more experience with the other DLC characters, maybe with the exception of Alien. Yeah. Is this pay to win again? Are they that good? Uh, well, I'm not too sure about Leatherface yet. I fought a Butcher online and uh he seems pretty ridiculous uh, a lot of 50 50s and all that bullshit and um overall i'd say probably not pay to win but they're pretty strong overall for like every character but i haven't really labbed the alien all that much yet well i should probably bust out the patch notes because a lot of the characters that got hit really hard are characters i do not play so people are saying tremor is done I don't know. Does anyone have anything on that? I, I don't know how true that is. Well, his uprock was nerfed, and it was unintentional. Like, you couldn't combo after it, but uh, the recent hotfix re-added the ability to combo off of the uprock. So it's worse, but it's still it's better now that he can combo off of it again. So overall, he's not he's not broken. Like, he's not going to be... He's gonna be. He's gonna still be used in tournaments. I think. I don't think he's anywhere close to being a shit character. Well, I, that's good. I mean, 
I, I was not against nerfing him because I just don't like the character. I hate yeah. the fact that Tremor's in so many top eights. It's kind of like Freddy. I was so worried that Freddy was going to win Evo, and I'm like, this is what Mortal Kombat has come to. But um, I guess I, I've grown up a bit. I'm not quite as butthurt about stuff like that anymore. But yeah, the reason why I bring it up is because all the Combat 2 guys are going to be playable at, at final round, and that's going to yeah. be really interesting, especially if uh, Cyber Sub is as, as dumb as everyone says he is. So. Yeah, I don't think he's as dumb now, especially with the hotfix. Um, I think he's, uh, I think he's probably going to be a fair character, but he's still going to beat people who haven't learned the matchup yet because of his overhead dive kick and low bombs. I mean, that's just, if you don't know that, you're going to get messed up. But I don't know that. I totally yeah. don't know that. So <laughs> I'm going to yeah. die probably quite a bit. It's pretty rough. Um, the other point of topic is Quan Chi. Where is Quan Chi now? No one. I, I haven't. I don't know if there's a consensus on that yet. I think he's uh, still really strong. He's not anywhere near bottom tier, I don't feel like. And he can do all the same shit he had if he used the EX Trance anyway. So it's, he still has unblockables and all that. He just doesn't have it off of his regular chance, which was a really good change in my opinion. Yeah, that, that sounds good. That sounds fair. You know, um, It sounds like don't take away the character's options. Just make them make them fit into the game the way they're supposed to be. I think that's a good, a really good philosophy. I, I think MK9 was really bad at that, where if something wasn't working, they just took it out. Um, yeah. Sub-Zero's uh, ground freeze reset, I think, was a good example of that. Something that Which, probably needed yeah. to go, but it was just gone. Like, it just, yeah. there was nothing to take his place. The so Sub-Zero just kind of got teared down for no reason. I, don't, I, I still don't think that should have been taken out. He needed it. I think... <laughs> That thing was such a useless move. It had no other use other than that, and then they removed it. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I absolutely... Well, I don't know if I... It's hard. It's really hard, because yeah. I'm one of those weirdos who thinks Sub-Zero probably wasn't as bad as we thought. Um, yeah. I think if you rush down with him, his down four is really good. You know, his neutral yeah. chain combos are really good. Um, I don't know. that. He, maybe have it scale more? Are I we talking even, about MK9 Sub-Zero right now? We totally are, yes. Man. yes. <laughs> <laughs> man okay go ahead <laughs> well that's a good question because we're going to transition transition to Bo Rai Cho soon um, with Tom Brady do we think he's going to have better success any success with Bo Rai Cho uh, you know that sounds, like I, no. that sounds like a resounding no it's a kind of middle ground here like I don't think so at least not with Bartitsu because that just uh it, i just don't like that variation at all right now i think it's the worst out of the three it's not it has so many gaps in his strings i mean like how are you supposed to open someone up in the neutral like all you can throw out is like farts and forward one and it's like his forward one has good range but how far are you going to get with that yeah that makes sense and his run is terrible from what i understand yeah his mobility is by far the worst in the game Except for maybe the roll, which but that costs stamina. Stamina, so it's like he has a worse run than Goro now, which is pretty big feat. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I, if if Tom Brady actually does commit to this character, goes into like fucking final round and gets bodied, it will almost be worth it for to have him on the mic and see what happens. Like that would almost make my day. I agree. <laughs> Tom Brady is just a miracle of life. I love him so much. <laughs> <laughs> we might be able to see him come up with some tech that he's hiding or something like that. I think uh, he, if he goes to Drunken Master, I think he has a better shot at being successful with the character, but he has a lot of work. Well, Maybe he'll show up with some like crazy Aquaman shit that no one knows about. Everybody be happy. Or he yeah. no no he'll be happy. Aquaman was he won the first Injustice tournament did he not against Rio in Grand Finals with Aquaman? He did. Yeah, ECT. Yeah, that's right. So that would be interesting. I, I would love to see him be successful too. Don't get me wrong. I just I just love hearing him talk. And if he keeps what, well no maybe it's to my benefit for him to win because if he wins he will never shut up about it probably. So yeah no I I. I love Tom Brady. I want more Tom Brady, and I think that's the biggest fail of MKX is he kind of dropped off. Again, he did this with Injustice as well. 
you know, he did okay. Then he just kind of disappeared. I don't know why. But, um... He's getting kind of old, like... <laughs> isn't he one of the <laughs> oldest dudes who, like, consistently show up at these things? I think he's 37 years old. All right. Yeah, I think 38 or something like that. He's... Yeah, something. I mean, you yep. know, like, Alex Valle has, like place that he holds down the fort over there and he doesn't have to like go around the country or anything really he probably does but i'm just saying like he's no sonic fox no not by any means and i don't know perfect legend is another one because because he has been an online warrior for a year straight oh, man. so is he yeah. gonna get a lot better now is he with the new net code is he gonna be tearing shit up now what's gonna happen no he's gonna mm-hmm. keep talking shit he's gonna get 13 out again it's gonna be great well, that's not bad either. That That's good, too. Like, as long as one of the two things happens, then that's fine. Oh, but... no, no. No one wanted to see it the first time. The people, the commentators on the mic were like, PL, sit down, shut up. We don't want to see it. We know what's going to yeah, happen. Uh, Arturo was like, no, don't do this, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. But he is a really good player. Like, even at ESL, like, he used he, hot yeah. Against, um Yeah. Um, and it worked a little bit. Like, it went some, somewhat the distance, right? Yeah, he used um, Displacer Raiden and That's Alias right. Johnny Cage against Sonic Fox, and his alias was shit, but he did fairly well against him. But, I mean, I, th- I thought it was an interesting pick to use D- Displacer, because that's usually regarded as, like, Raiden's second best variation, so it's not that great, but I thought it was an interesting pick for Carl. Like, I, didn't, I expect him to go Lao all the way. Well, he was known for uh, raiding an MK9 because yeah. I remember uh, the, um, I think Frosty Faustines. He yeah. uh, took out Slips in 16 bit in the and top Dizzy. eight. Yeah, and Dizzy, that's right. I forgot yeah. about Dizzy. <laughs> Man, where is Dizzy? <laughs> Holy shit! Where, where the fuck is Dizzy? He still but, posts um, uh, on TYM, but he hasn't really been playing. I don't think. Well, he was like the fucking breakthrough hero when this game came out. And I get was yeah. it really the option select? Is that why he did so? I mean, that, that, I know, he's a really good player, so it can't just yeah. be that. There has to be something else going on. I think it was overall, like, Raiden just getting nerfed really hurt the character. Like, obviously the option select helped a lot, but Dizzy also had a big factor in using Raiden. Is I mean, that that set was so hyped, too. That was by far one of the best sets of MKX so far. Oh, yeah, no, that was... And that was Combo Breaker, right? I, yeah, well, I think so. He beat Sonic Fox. There's so many chops. Yeah, Jesus Christ, much. all day. Yeah. Man, but it was it was cool, though. But part of me was kind of rude against him because I was pissed that he went against Johnny Cage. I uh, like yeah. character loyalist, and the fact that he threw his character under a bus, like, on day zero, was kind of like, come on, man, come on. And Johnny Cage is good now. He's better than Raiden. He, so. he actually uh, switched to Cage a while back. He's uh, playing A-list. Well, it, it, the, the thing is, though, it's too little too late at this point for yeah. me because I'm like, yeah, now that you know the character is good. Yeah, it's, uh, he won at like some Brazilian tournament or something a while back. I can't <laughs> remember awesome. what it's it was random, called, but, but it's awesome. I'm not sure if it was Brazil or like it was in a different country, though, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, his cage looks good. He, uh, he was in a tournament recently. I think he lost to Wild Cowboy. I can't remember what tournament it was, but... He's uh, looking pretty strong with A-list. Yeah, no, it's um, this is a shame it took this long. It's a shame we couldn't beat Sonic Fox with A-list, but yeah. you know, it's all good. Like, it's I, I, I mean, I don't go to tournaments anymore, so I'm not going to judge people for like paying good money and using a shit character. Like, that's yeah, I, I don't blame them for going tier if you're going to throw down five hundred dollars. But Carl, though, I'm Carl. Perfect Legend. Like, I really hope does a lot better. Like, I seriously hope he is tearing shit up. I mean, yeah. Because he's hope... clearly good. He's so good. What's up? He is good. Um, I, 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 I'm expecting him not to do that because if you want to get better, you have to play offline with real players and not just some random ranked scrubs. Like every time I, I went to an, into a stream for a couple minutes the other day, and he was just playing some trash. Like I don't know what he expects how to get better by playing like all these bad characters. I thought losing to Sonic Fox in that first to thirteen would give him a wake up call to get better at the game but seems like he just wants to teleport all day with Lau and have no repercussions for that when it's obviously not possible his teleport is so bad in this game I think he learned a very bad twisted lesson with you know 
yeah. 2012 Evo that if I stay home, I can still win. And yeah. he never got out of that, maybe. I don't know. But even the 13-0, like, he was playing well against Sonic Fox. Just every round was just never enough. Every match was just never enough. He never quite made it past the line. Yeah, he played well. But again, like, he just kept resorting to that teleporting. Like, there yeah. is... There are instances where it looked like he was getting the hang of it and he was adapting, but nope, it just kept teleporting at the end of the round for no reason. It's just, yeah. Well, I was going to ask, um, I, Django, you said you did not see Winter Brawl, right? I did not. Did you see Winter Brawl, Red Man? I watched some of it, yeah. I thought the top eight was kind of disappointing. I thought that was probably the most boring MKX major we've had to date. Yeah, it's pretty... Um, like I was watching it pre top eight and I was really rooting for coach Steve to win because he's using Kano and that's someone who we don't see very often at all. And he's playing so well. He, uh, beat forever King with Kano and, uh, I saw that that was brilliant. Yeah, very hype match. And, um, I was really disappointed that he lost to Jupiter. I think it was. And, Oh, after that, it was just Quanchi and Tanya and shit, so I kind of tuned out after that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Honestly, done I... at least. E even if it's just Cyber <laughs> Sub-Zero, at least we know that that reign is over. Yeah. I'm no, poor... so yeah? <laughs> I'm so done of watching Tanya and Quanchi and Kung Lao and all that shit. I can't stand it. Poor Dragon, dude. Like, that guy was almost there. He was almost about to dethrone Sonic Fox. And yeah. then his character gets fucking flushed with the patches. So yeah. <laughs> he was so close. Poor Maybe Michael Angelo, dude. That guy, yeah. he, he missed his window. That guy should have won a tournament a long time ago, and now it's probably never going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tragedy. No, Michael Angelo, he, he kept almost getting top three, and now <laughs> his character just got kicked in the balls with a steel boot. And it's, oh, man. Yeah, yeah Jupiter. Ju I don't know what it is. Even in MK9, Jax is not a terribly fun character to watch for me. I don't. We don't see him too, too often. I hate Devora. I hate watching Devora. Yeah. Honeybee, you're boring. talented as fuck, but I hate your character. Very boring character. I like. I, I kind of like Jax. I think Jupiter's play style is so much fun to watch because he's so good. He just has very good footsies, very strong. He knows when to rush down and when to just sit back and block. And I'm surprised he hasn't won a tournament yet. Jax is really, really strong. I agree. His armor decisions are very good. He's very yeah. selective with his armor, and it almost always pays off. It's super impressive. But, you know, I've kind of had to turn around in Quan Chi. By, by the end of the non-XL era, I was actually really enjoying, like, Michelangelo's Quan Chi, Forever King's Quan Chi. I was I, – I guess because there's less of them now, but – I yeah. liked seeing the coin flip. I don't know why. That's a, it's way more interesting than fucking bugs from Devora. Like the coin flip is actually kind of hype if someone deals with it or someone overcomes it, or it's, just seeing someone get raffle stomped with Quan Chi is kind of interesting to me. Hmm. But fucking, I hate more than Devora. I fucking hate Cassie Cage so much, and that is Sonic Fox's new main. So yeah. That it's, EX no punch is so dumb. So dumb. And she didn't get hit that hard in the patch, I don't believe, right? She didn't get hit too hard, I don't think. I mean, she got a few changes. I think one was changing her string input, so she didn't get the interactable glitch anymore, where okay. if she input it, she would uh, do an interactable instead of the string. And um, I think her flip kick got nerfed. Uh, no EX armor. Version. Yeah. Which, that thing was stupid anyway, so... <laughs> Started up in like six frames or something. Well, she's been the luckiest I think out of everyone in the roster. She she's been pretty much dumb since the very beginning, but mm -hmm. she hasn't really been hit hard in a single patch. It's very minor adjustments. Yeah. Okay, well, that covers Winter Brawl. That covers the DLC even. Um, what are we doing with MKX guys? Because Killer Instinct is coming out. Street Fighter Five is already out. Are we all going to go hard in MKX, or are we going to divide our, our resources here? What are we doing? The Royal Wii. <laughs> <laughs> the Royal Wii. Well, I'm not going to be playing Street Fighter for obvious reasons, so... It's between Killer Instinct and XL. 
Well, uh, let's talk about Killer Instinct then. Do because that, in my opinion, I, I hate to say it, but that, in my opinion, is the superior game. Do I? That's the one I would like to go full time, not MKX, honestly. But I'm just I'm not very good at it. I, I'm I'm mostly relying on Glacius to get any sort of mileage. The minute I switch to a character, I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. So, when does that like? 29th, March 29th is when it comes out. How does that drop though? Is it like? one DLC character at a time, or...? No, it's going to be initially, the first four revealed will be available. All right, so what, that's Rash, uh... Kim Wu, Kim Tusk, Wu. and the Arbiter. Or the Arbiter, I guess I should, I should say. The Armbiter? The Arbiter. It, it's a James Chen joke. It's... Okay. Arbiter. We'll call it Arbiter. All right. That dude. <laughs> and, uh... And Tusk, yeah. Yeah, no, if I was going to jump in there, it would be... I really want to check out Tusk. He looks good. He looks fun. He looks really fucking fun. It was, he's got, like, crazy countery shit. Yeah, he looks fun. Sword's huge. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. He looks like a buffed-out Maximil- Maximilian, so, you know, it's hard not to be on board with that. He does. Yeah. It's like a Maximilian grunge band Viking. Yeah, yeah, he kind of has, like, the fucking, like, plaid sweater tied around his waist. So, yeah, no, it is very early 90s. It's very Reality Bites. It's um, not bad looking, but... Yeah, the reason I bring this up is because I'm in this horrible struggle between Street Fighter V, Killer Instinct, and Mortal Kombat. You and it makes have me... all three, you know. Um, It's the opposite, dude. I don't want to play anything. I'm just, I'm just so sick of pressing buttons. Like, I just want <laughs> to put the controller down. Just, hmm. oh, man, I'm hearing fucking, like, Sanwa buttons in my sleep now. I don't know. Street Fighter Five right now is really good, but I, because I was putting so much time into XL, I feel like I got pretty far behind in the competition. And everyone was already good because of the beta, so... Yeah, so for Street Fighter Five right now, it's just me, Cyborg, and Shadowloo. And I have yet to play Shadowloo, so... Who's Cyborg know, play? He plays uh, right now? I want to say Ken. Because mm. I did play him some matches. He was playing Ken for a while, and it wasn't bad. I mean, it's a big transition, like... um. But a lot of the transitional stuff comes from just, you know, what you do on block, you know, how you apply your normals, you know, finding out when it's your turn. Unlike MKX, when it's very obviously clear when yeah. it's your turn, and Street Fighter Five's not like that. So, I think he likes Street Fighter Five a lot better than Killer Instinct. I don't think he liked Killer Instinct at all. Like, I think he yeah. outright was like, "No, yeah. this doesn't make sense to me." It's a very hard game to get into. I still haven't even. I still don't really understand Killer Instinct at the level I would like to. Like, I understand the basics, but I don't understand shadow counters and all that shit. Well, the one reason I want to go back to it is because I mesh with Glacius so much better than I mesh with anyone in Street Fighter. I'm sorry, in Mortal Kombat <laughs> XL. So, yeah, and not that I don't love Cryo. Cryo is fucking awesome, but I just think I don't know. Like Cryo is. I don't know how to explain. There's something magical about Glacius. I can't put into words, but... <laughs> he's, he's very kind. He's very sweet to me, but... No, he's a cool guy, man. He's cool. Yeah, he was... I was hoping the same thing would happen with you, Django, because I know you're a very big Conra fan, even though he just got hit by the nerf bat. Look, man, I love Glacius, too. I started off on Glacius. That's true. No, that is very true. And then, and then you know, Conra happened, and I was like, hey, this guy shit can piss people off more easily <laughs> than the other guy. I'm going to go this way, but... I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I I want to I want to jump back into Killer Instinct one day. I'll probably play Street Fighter Five way down the road. You know when Akuma's tired of being in Tekken and he comes back to his actual game, then I'll play Street Fighter Five. That'll be fun. Yeah, or never. Just, one of those uh, two. <laughs> those are both viable possibilities, but I'm, I'm I need actually Akuma. super happy. I don't think we need Akuma, dude. I, I that's where I might I have to say disagree. we. I'm not using this royal we like you are. I need Akuma. <laughs> I think we need to get our thoughts straight here. I don't think Akuma, <laughs> I don't think Akuma is 100% necessary for Street Fighter V. He, he's coming. I know he's coming. They've pretty much already semi-confirmed him as far as I'm concerned, so there's no fighting it now. Have they? I mean, Harada basically said just because Akuma's in Tekken does not mean he's not going to be in Street Fighter V. But, so why would he say That's that? That's the most obvious statement in the world. <laughs> Well, like, there's nothing so legally keeping us from putting him in the game, but, you know, it's like if I NetherRealm said that about Fujin, everybody would be like, you guys are ass, yeah, okay. If NetherRealm said that about Fujin, then I'd be pissed if Fujin didn't show up in the game. 
Wow. I would take that as half confirmation. If uh, Netherrealm said... I don't if, know if that's if, a good idea, dude. <laughs> no, no, I agree. I, I definitely don't want Fuji anymore. But if, if April 2015, they say, there's no reason we can't make Fujin DLC, and then he's never DLC, that might drive me fucking nuts. That might put me to the breaking point right there. Staying mm. silent about it doesn't bother you, though? Staying silent at least gives me a healthy amount of skepticism, you know? Um... Like I, I don't, I don't like the teases. I don't like being teased over something that's not real. Uh, yeah. The whole marketing was about that, um, with putting Lee May in a fucking trailer only to show she's not playable. Still pissed about that. I'll, I don't think I'll ever really be over that. But um, I don't know. It's 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 interesting to me. Um, but I am relieved Fujin was not in Combat Pack Two, as I've said a hundred times. I don't think my thoughts are any secret on this. But I, mm -hmm. I'm, I think his MK11 chances skyrocketed i just oh god it's like mk9 the voice file and everything and leading up to mkx he was one of the most requested characters and then the story mode thing and the cassie selfie fatality that kind of just bothered yes, me I so agree. much like Definitely. why would you even tease that like it's like you obviously know he's one of the most requested but you were refuse to do anything about it so at this point i would take him in a combat pack three or anything because i don't think he's going to be i don't even think he's going to be mentioned in mk11 after what they did with him here because like they didn't even do anything with him he appeared in the story for like three minutes and he was there's never a mentioned. possibility it's something personal at this point and it's just like a vendetta yeah. why I not put him in um no i agree because before the cassie cage fatality i was thinking maybe they're just dumb maybe they just don't know better maybe they just can't help it and then I see the fatality, I'm like, yeah. those fuckers aren't dumb. They know what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. And <sighs> so I, I don't expect him to be in MK11 at all. And like, at this point, I think I'd take him in any form, like, even if it is just DLC, because I don't, although I don't believe there's going to be a Combat Pack 3, I think it's pretty much done at this point. Still uh, sucks that he didn't make it, in my opinion. Even as mean, DLC. Will it be. If there was a combat pack three, it would be at least one guest character, at least one gimmick character like Chrome, and then yeah. two possible spots for Fujin. So I don't yeah. know if I even want a combat pack three. I'm kind of glad they're done. I'm ready yeah. for Injustice 2 at this point, man. Yeah, Injustice 2, uh, Ed has been tweet or teasing about it on Twitter lately. So Really? See, I didn't know that. I was not yeah. aware of that. He even kept teasing about adding more content to MKX. He was like teasing about both, actually. So it's kind of a and uh, Carlos Pacina has been tweeting uh, mocha mocap pictures. So it's really a fifty-fifty at this point on what uh, they're doing. Fuck. More than a fifty-fifty. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a this is something I want. This has nothing to do with anything except for mocap. Like, does does Iron Galaxy use mocap for their animation? Yeah. I think so. Okay, because I knew Double Helix wasn't. They did all the first season with hand animation, so I wasn't sure what that was, what the process was these days. I don't know how that would work. When you say hand animations, what do you mean? I mean they use their hands to animate them. Well, like they typed on a keyboard? I, I don't know what that means. Um, like, they probably that? used a mouse. <laughs> this isn't helping. It's not, what are you talking it's not about? effective, Jingo. <laughs> they, did, they, they didn't use mocap. They what? used the other way of animating. <laughs> like sock puppets? I don't. I don't follow. Dude. No, you just like open up fucking Maya and you animate the character. <laughs> <laughs> You're just saying they animate the character by animating the character. I don't know what to take back from that, Jingo. Well, I, I mean, listen, I not every. You know, not all 3D games are animated with mocap, right? I didn't know that. I honest to God did not know that. That's you didn't know that. I thought everyone was Carlos Pacina wearing bubbles. <laughs> just I, I don't know if you're trolling me right now. Or I'm not. I can't I'm figure dead this serious. out. I am so serious. Well, not about the Carlos Pacina, but about everything else, though. I am dead serious. Okay. No. Yeah. There's. There was a time before little golf ball outfits, and <laughs> you know they had to like pose the characters and you know animate them like that okay so almost like claymation then yeah okay sorry this, you just broke my brain for the past five <laughs> minutes there I, and i still don't know if you're 
trolling you. I'm not trolling you. I'm not trolling. I thought I thought motion capture was the modern standard for 3D graphics. I knew for like 2D games they use sprites. Obviously, that I knew. Okay. Yeah. I thought that was the dichotomy. I thought it was sprites versus Carlos Piscina. Like I never knew there was a middle ground between those two. So yeah, there is. You can you can totally. There's like programs out there where you can like grab a wrist and pull it in this way, and there's a pose. Huh. It's interesting. Yeah. And then, I mean, most mocap, if not all mocap, is cleaned up with hand animation afterwards anyway. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, yes. So I don't know if uh, Iron Galaxy does animation the Chicago way or, or <laughs> you know, hand, I remember, an- uh, hand animation. I remember uh, reading that Carrie Hoskins did the mocap for uh, Maya. So and Carrie Hoskins was the actor for uh, Sonya in MK3. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to see that cuz I mean, she still looks good at her age. She still yeah, looks she fantastic. Looks really good. I don't like Maya. But Carrie Hoskins is cool with me. Maya, I, I tried to use that character. I I just gave up. Like I, I threw one dagger, couldn't get it back, went to the big <laughs> screw. That's what happened. I think that's the correct answer. Like I didn't know the input. Like I couldn't fucking pick it up. Like I just, it was just on the ground, and I was on top of it. I'm like, let's go to Saber Wolf. And you know, Killer Instinct is actually a a fun example about animation because I think season one's animation is a lot better than season two's. Yeah, I mean, that make, I mean, I feel sorry for the guy who'd have to motion capture for Saber Wolf. That looks horribly uncomfortable. Well, there wasn't so, one. So, exactly. So right. it make, it does make a lot of sense. Um. Yeah, season like Iron Galaxy. I'm not holding the ink against them because they're. I don't know. This is kind of their first like solo, although not solo, triple A type ish. You know, it's not triple A. I don't know what the fuck to call Iron Galaxy. Well, they're, I have they're good a people. Very... I'm not trying to take shots at Iron Galaxy. Oh, they're hilarious too. I I love their live streams. Um, yeah, they're good. They're fantastic. Keats has been one of my heroes since like. Wake up, sure you can five years ago. So I love that dude. He seems like a fun individual. Yeah, he, he seems like a little bit of an asshole, but in a good way. Like uh, he's, uh, he seems like a a funny guy, even if he's a bit of a dick. Like that's the thing. Like the he time. seems like if he was in a situation to troll something like a Fujin, he would be way worse about it. Like I feel yeah, like I, I, mean, I feel like he would actually enjoy torturing people over something stupid like that. Whereas Ed Boone is a little more, you know, reserved and political and smart because, you know, he's worked his way up to a nice job. Well, that's just part of the trolling, too. That That's what makes him a master troll is that it you is. never see it coming. It is. God damn it, you're such a pro. <laughs> he's good at it, dude. Like, he did the troll face in the Angry Joe interview. Like, it was amazing. <laughs> like, he fucking, no one caught it. And then we found it weeks later and we're like, he knew it. Oh, man. Yeah, no, it was fucking brilliant, dude. I want to see if I can find it again. Has everyone seen it? Yeah, I've seen it. Okay, yeah, Redman, you've seen it? Yep. Jesus then Christ. My work here is done, but it's amazing. It's so <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> I mean, aside from that, it's that, that was really good. But, I mean, look, man, any programmer that, like, within 10 years or some shit, like, sidesteps into creative director of a AAA studio, you did some good work. What'd you do there? Some, uh, that's, that's some good movement, sir. It's a it's a brilliant move. I agree. No, absolutely. Creative director. Yeah, and um, just uh, he, he still looks good. I don't know what, what vitamins he's taking or how many fish oil eggs he's he's. Fucking... I know that he loves him some basketball, which it sounds like yeah. a nightmare. I would never want to see him play basketball. <laughs> yeah, every time he mentions it on Twitter, I just picture like the scene from Along Came Polly, like Ben Stiller. That's what I, what comes in my oh, mind. Oh yeah, God, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> all the fucking old, you know, '90s MK dudes just out in the back with a hoop, just glistening and pouring sweat. Oh, Sean Hemrick, Jesus Christ! Oh man, so and and Mike up. Boone, Mike Boone is in there too. Mike Boone is like the Frank Stallone of the fucking game industry. Oh man, <laughs> that's a compliment. If he hears that, that is a fucking compliment. Norm Macdonald turned Frank Stallone into a fucking god, so that's my opinion. But it's a fucking nightmare. <laughs> but um, it's it's um crazy that he's still in shape. His hair is mostly still black. His eyebrows look fantastic. 
Like, yeah, it's just amazing. He's got to be in his late 40s at least, I think. But yeah. Yeah, props. I mean, people think on the Nethercast because I rage and bitch so much that I don't like these people, but I really do. I disagree with them on a lot of things, but I think they're all super, super yeah. cool dudes. Uh, like uh, Baron. Is it, is it um, Steve Baron? Yeah, Steve Baron. Yeah, he, to me, he's one of the cornerstones. He is one of the, the parts of him, of the MK staff that has kept the game so good all these years yeah. because the game still looks so good. Oh, that and guy. To he's him, yeah. really strong. Um. I, I called him. I called him Sean Hemrick a minute ago, and I didn't mean that. No, that's. A, I think you're guy. talking about Baron because I meant Baron. Super oh, okay. He's white as shit, but yeah, yeah, he's cool. I like him. Yeah. But what are we seeing right now? Um, just that. Uh, I wonder how long Ed can keep it up. Like, if we'll ever see someone else take the mantle of MK, and kind of running with it their way. I mean, yeah, that's definitely gonna happen now that Warner Brothers owns that shit. Yeah. They'll, you know, they'll new Fifty Two eyes it down the road whenever. Ed's, I don't know, get, finally getting to make the grid somehow or some shit. And like, okay, there you go. You guys can reboot Mortal Kombat again. Well, I think we got lucky. I think that it's a good thing that they only did a soft reboot before. Because if they did not done a hard reboot in 2011, it would have been the worst thing ever. It would have been, you know, Gears of Laura Croft bullshit, whatever. It would have looked awful. Um, yeah. Now, I think if they did a reboot, it wouldn't be so bad because that... The era of, you know, Chris Nolan grit is finally come to an end. So it would actually may it may look like something decent now, you know? Yeah. And Razor, I know Razor listens to these things. So I'd be curious what he thinks. I know he is a big fan of changing out the blood in the Netherrealm staff. He is a very big fan of getting someone new in there and taking out the committee writing. I know he, that's what he wants more than anything at this point. So, you know, I'd be curious to see what they do in Lost with that sentiment. If anything, I, I don't know. But I mean... Especially now that they have Warner Brothers' fat ass wallet back, and I'm like, why isn't there some like other team like there was back in fucking Midway can do it, you know, making a Shaolin Monk type situation, like you know, not the MK guys, like another setup or whatever. Bring Tobias back. That's I what I think. I don't think he wants to come back. Dude, he posts about MK all the time on Twitter. <laughs> I think <laughs> I he, know that either. I think he wants to. I I I think he'd be fully welcome to coming back, in my opinion, but. That's maybe, cool. maybe, but then again, he didn't, you know, stick with it. So Warner Brothers are like, hmm, no, no, you should have been like Ed over here who, you know, yeah, didn't take as many sick days or something. <laughs> yeah, he failed uh, after Special Forces was in development. Ouch, yeah, see, that would do it, yeah. man. That's the kind of thing to... He said he didn't even think it was going to be finished, which is surprising. That's almost as bad as, like, showing up, like, guys, listen, I have the... The best new idea, the whole studio is going to go in on, on a new Connect game. It's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be great. <sighs> Man. Yeah, and especially back then with Special Forces, like, Midway did not have the budget to risk much, if anything. Yeah. So, Special Forces was probably a decent loss. Well, I don't know, man. I, I imagine his final day at Midway probably wasn't the funnest for Midway. He probably had, like, a shopping cart of office supplies with, like, an old Mac, like, right at the <laughs> bottom of it. Like, I don't know, man. Like, it's hard to say, like... I don't know, man. Uh, I, I think to, the reason why Tobias will never come back is because he's lost all seniority and he'd have to work for Vogel. Like, yeah. he was the number two guy for so many years, and now he has to work with, like, John Vogel's intern. I don't think that's going to fly with him. So, yeah, I think, we'll have yeah. to see. If he did come back, I would hope that they would give him, like, at least the same level of Vogel because, honestly, he knows the lore better. But at this point, I don't know if he'd be able to reconnect with all the new characters and shit well, that's the, i don't think tobias is that is really necessary so I, I i would like to see somebody else to you know yeah have a hand in doing it it's fine but like everyone fucking knows the lore better than vogel like it's on the fucking yeah. internet all over the place like it's that that's not hard mortal Kombat isn't actually that complicated mm. just fucking you know read down through you know mythologies and some stuff happened in mortal Kombat. To, all right cool make a video game like it's it's not that hard but the hard part, I guess, is just the dude making the choices, which are the good ideas and which are the questionable ones that piss people off. Well, it's so murky what Vogel even does anymore, because it sounds like to me <laughs> that 14 you do? dudes write a script and then he spell checks it. That's what it sounds like to me. It's not like even what he fucking does. <laughs> what do you do? What would you say you do here? <laughs> Vogel is good with people. That much is clear. But we don't know what else he does, though. I That's take the, the story... 
from the writers and I hand it to Ed. <laughs> Do you actually hand it to Ed? Well, no. <laughs> Fucking Derek Kurtzkit comes in and, you know, I, he meets me halfway and... <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, man. That is my favorite movie of all time. For those who don't know, that is the greatest movie ever made, in my opinion. But um, see, that is that, that is that is recorded in the Nethercast lore. Yeah, that is that is part of the lore forever. Mm -hmm. But uh, just I, I do like. Here's the thing: I like Vogel. I think he did do a lot of smart stuff in the 3D era. I just mm -hmm. think after retcon in the 3D era, he had to start a new completely. And with this really fucked setup, it's like okay, well, Cyrax is to be in the first tournament now. Go. Because I, I have a theory that Vogel did write this really good script, or at least told 14 people to write a really good script for MKX. And then the development team looked at it and like, okay, let's just take 40 pages out of this. And that's why we have what we have now. I don't, I think Vogel is super talented, but I think he's working under the restrictions. I have very little doubt that MKX's story mode was supposed to be like 35, 40% longer. But this is what we're stuck with. I think, I think he even said on Twitter the reason like they ended it so early with Shinnok and Cassie is because it couldn't be as long as like a Lord of the Rings movie. I think that's exactly what he said. Yeah. So I always try to be careful whenever I should talk vocal because I was one of his biggest defenders back in the day. And I still think he's a super, super talented guy. But again, I blame everything I can on Warner Brothers if I'm able to. And I think this was another decision from Warner <laughs> it's Brothers. so saying, easy. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, well, I mean, I hate them anyway. Like, I already don't like them oh, outside man. of their own Mortal Kombat, so it's just so easy to the fucking... The only thing I haven't done so far is accuse them of being white. <laughs> you can do it now. Now is your opportunity. Now is my chance. I'm really excited. <laughs> I, I'm i hoping that with, you know, the Bo Rai Cho situation, they actually go that route for the next game. And there's a, another, like, Outworld tournament. That seems like it could yeah. be fun. That seems like the best option. I think that's, like, the most like sol solid way to go forward with Raiden being dark and shit now. And, um, you know, the intros with Bo Ride show actually kind of got me excited about, you know, the lore and shit again, because I was kind of disappointed after MKX, but those intros I think were written pretty well for, uh, Bo Ride show and, uh, Triborg and, yeah, it'd be cool if they do like this whole civil war thing, like they're doing with Marvel right now. We're like fucking the good members of Outworld have to fight the good members of Earthrealm because Raiden's an asshole. I think there's something there, you know? Yeah. And Bo had the best ending, I think, out of everybody, so... Yeah. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, uh, you know, just... Raiden can continue to talk with his bud buddies down in the fucking Netherrealm, and <laughs> Liu Kang and Katana can come back, and everything could be great, and... I mean, Katana's not the worst bud buddy you could oh, possibly man. have. man. Just saying. Just throwing that out there. Who's, who's, who's worse? What, Melina? <sighs> yeah. Reiko didn't like it. Oh, uh, Reiko. <laughs> Reiko was a good man. Yeah. You guys know what's going to happen, right, in MK11? Rain's going to kill Fujin immediately. <laughs> That's just what has that to would, happen. I wouldn't mind that. That would be some nice closure. That's like more, you know, closure than that character's ever had, ever. <laughs> I don't know, Raiden, Chameleon, someone's going to break his neck under a giant portal, and it's going to be sad, but we're ready for it at least. At least we're ready emotionally. You know, yeah. we can take it. You know, it's not going to fucking blindside us like so much so much stuff in MK9 and X did to us, but I feel like we're ready for anything at this point. Um, we have spent the past, like, 40 minutes talking about fucking lore. What the fuck the podcast is this? <laughs> What's going on here? Well, What's it's interesting, point? you know. I remember cause... the point. The point was some games are animated by hand. Yep. All right. Well, but what do you mean by animated by hand? God like, damn it. Oh, <laughs> I'm just sending you YouTube videos. <laughs> but, but I mean, honestly, though, like, I want to do Dash Cancel with, Dash Cancels with Lee May. I want to zone with Fujin. I want to do all these, these cool gameplay things with Can't do these characters who haven't had a chance to breathe, you know? I mean, forever, Razor said he wanted to see Drunken Boxing done well in fighting games, yeah. and finally we saw that done. I think so. Boracho is like the first step towards that because he's sort he was sort of a risk character to bring back because no one ever no one everyone kind of sort of wanted him to come back but he wasn't ever on anyone's top 10 lists like he was always sort of the outlier like he he's a good character story wise but they never knew what to do with him gameplay wise but I think they finally yeah. nailed that <laughs> and it looks beautiful, no matter how viable it looks. Yeah, amazing. it looks great Everyone. whenever he launches off of his pole to do the flying kick. It looks fantastic. <laughs> yeah, 
He's Everyone like says Chris he, Farley in his animations, and I like it. What's up? Everyone says he animates well. Every even if they don't like him, they say you know he, he looks great. So, well, here's a question: as someone who has played a lot of Boright Show, it sounds like he may struggle tier wise. How do you think he's going to do against the top tier? Against the Quan Chi's, against the Tanyers? How is he going to hold up? I mean, Zoners give him a problem, clearly, but do you think he has yeah. a, a viable chance against the top eight? Um, like a Shinnok, I, maybe? I have no idea at this point. I think it's way too early to tell, but it's obvious that he has problems, like his mids and his mobility and everything. Like, he gets good damage in the corner, and he gets semi-good damage mid-screen, and he has strong options to get in but he needs meter to do that and he can't really build meter other than like farting so it's like what do you do with him in the neutral like you can't really use him effectively unless you get in and by the time he gets in like the opponent has already built like two bars so it's really he struggles really badly against people who can just shut down that offense and people who can just zone him out and not have to worry about all the shit he has when he gets in well, I, I guess, I guess rewinding a bit, people said a lot of the same things about Cryo. The difference is it sounds like you're probably right. Uh, we're going to see, but people said Cryo can't rush down or, or he'll get killed. I do not agree with that. Um, yeah. If you check the opponent with slide, you have a knockdown and the power is yours at that point. A jump kick, something as simple as a jump kick. I mean, he's yeah. got good. He's got a good hitbox. Not not like Scorpion's jump three good, but it's good. Mm -hmm. um, so once you get that knockdown, your rushdown begins, and you have a lot of good ways to do it. You know, plus if you play the footsie game, you have a lot of good whiff punishing options. You know, you yeah. have pretty good frame advantage on forward one two, even if it is fifteen startup, which I still think is too high. I would have made that twelve, um, or at the very least, I, I don't. Wouldn't, I wouldn't mind letting it have seventeen startup. If he had frame advantage afterwards, I don't know why he doesn't. Um, but but that's the thing. He has good ways of getting a knockdown. So I don't like people saying that Cryo can't be used offensively as a punch character. Fast mm -hmm. forward again to Bo Rai Cho. Does he have good ways of getting that knockdown? Because I think even if he does, you were mentioning that a lot of his normals hit high. So it's hard yeah. for him to get a block string started. Do you think that's going to be fixed later on? You know, well, he has a good way of knockdown with down back three, which are his monkey flips, but those are really na – they're like uh, minus 11 or so on block, I think. So I've been using those a lot because it's an overhead, and you can do – a lot of his strings uh, have lows in them, so you can go like mid, low, overhead, but that's kind of a gimmick because pe once people learn the matchup, they're going to block that, and you're going to get blown up. But it's sort of like a semi 50 50, I guess. But it's like, why would you block overhead when you can, when, when you'd get launched with the low? So it's, it's really hard to get that started. And after a knockdown, he can go into an OGG with the, uh, with the ground pound, which is about 11%. And he can get a free drink after that. But it's like, that costs meter again. So it's like, he can't really get anything started without using the monkey flips, I guess. I mean, he can get, he can. It's really like tough to open an opponent up when they're just blocking low the entire time because his main combo starter down down three three is a low and it's like you. It's really tough getting in and opening an opponent up when all of your launching strings are negative. All of your strings start high, so it's like all you can really do is like a block string into down back two, which is is a punch move, which is safe on block against like most characters. Okay. So it. It's, it's like he can't open up the opponent well, very well, all that much. And it's like you can throw and get a drink, but that's like five percent. And then you have to get in to get your drink again. And it's like if you don't open up the opponent at that time, you're gonna puke. And it's like it's really, <laughs> it's really fucking tough just getting in with this character. And it's like most of the damage I get is going in and acting like I'm gonna put on pressure and then farting and they jump in or try and run in. <laughs> And it honestly, trip is oh. or fart is actually like a good trip guard. Like you can just throw it out and like it lasts on. It doesn't look like it. It disappears, but like it'll still hit them if they go in that range. So ex fart is like the only like good way that you can pretty much shut your opponent's options down, especially in the corner. 
Well, that, that's my next question, actually, because it looks like monkey flips is a good way to gain ground to push them into the corner. Does because it also looks like he was partially inspired by Grandmaster. Is the yeah. EX fart a good corner trap? Can you keep someone in the corner and do yeah, really good damage with them? Yes, it's really strong. If you if you try and wake up, you can beat it if Bo isn't doing anything. But if you try and move with if you stay like if you don't wake up, you're pretty much fucked. You have to stay there and take all of the pressure that he's doing, or you're gonna get uh, caught in the fart. So it's basically like you knock him down, throw out the fart, and then go in and do everything Bo does well while they have to maintain that respect for the fart <laughs> but i like uh, it i like it a lot i do yeah mid-screen well, it's not as useful but it can still be useful so those are our two options then it sounds like the path we're going to go down is either bo right is going to fall apart or he's kind of go going to go down the grandmaster route and he's going to be a corner character who just bullies you all day but the difference is sub-zero doesn't need meter. Boraicho does. Yeah, exactly. So me. His meter is such a big part of his game. Like, if he, if he wants to get anything started, he needs meter. He needs meter to get in with torpedo. He needs need meter to get in with the fucking uh, roll. Like, he doesn't need meter to get in that in with that, but he needs stamina. Which, like, after two rolls, you're out of stamina. So you have to drink for stamina, and then <laughs> you have to. It's just a really big like endless cycle with him it's like it's so annoying getting in landing a combo and then puking and then getting punished for it it's like what the fuck it's like there's no there's not enough reward i think with that variation like torpedo is a great move but again to get in with that it costs meter like you can use the regular one but it doesn't have as much range so it's really it's a really big struggle i've been having with him so far but he's really fun to use and wh when you land that combo it's like the best feeling in the world because it does so much damage and like landing those multiple punches which is a uh, down forward one is like the best feeling ever it looks fun and that's why i went on that big rant on the nethercast about unbreakables because i don't want unbreakable to be good i want him to be interesting yeah i, I think an ice shield is a very interesting thing and the fact that I, I feel like I'm not allowed to use it really hurts the character experience for me, you know? So yeah, I, I guess now that I'm older, I don't really care much about tears anymore. I just want to do cool shit, have fun, and meaningfully yeah. beat my opponent. Like, I don't yeah. want to do dumb, brainless records to win. That's not fun to me. Yeah. So, I don't know. Um, yeah, I agree with that a lot. I, I, think it's I think most people will. I think the fighting game community in general is kind of coming that direction. Yeah. A lot of people say, like, oh, you play to win, though. And, like, a big part of why I like MK so much is because the game is fun to play. And you need to find that character that you enjoy and want to put your time into. You can't. I just have never been that type of person where you just pick up a character, like, purely because they're good and you want to win with them. I, I've never enjoyed that at all. Well, I mean, like, as. As cheesy and dumb and as Steven Seagal as it may sound, fighting games are all about creating an extension of you. This is not just a character. This is now an extension of myself. And, you know, if an extension of yourself is fucking Ferritor, I don't know if I'd have fun with that. I don't think I would dig that as much, you know? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's like chess, only you incorporate art and yourself into it, you know? Um, yeah. So, I don't know. I guess for closing thoughts, I want to get sort of a roundtable opinion on... Excel, like for the future of Excel, like do we think the game is substantially better than it was six months ago? Uh, do we think it's kind of a, a, a sort of a, a taken trade? Uh, do we think the game is worse? Uh, where do we see Mortal Kombat in a year from now? I guess that's my big question for everyone here. Um, I think it's, um, I'm not really sure so far. I think overall it feels better especially the netcode helps a lot and overall though i'm combat pack 2 was a disappointment to me because i obviously don't really like any of the characters besides bo Recho all that much triborg isn't how i wanted him to play really leatherface uh fuck him alien again <laughs> fuck him uh <laughs> but yeah um overall i think some characters needed more balanced changes like Necromancer, Shinnok, Ancestral Kung Jin, Unbreakable, like... Definitely. And they never... 
it seems like they're afraid to buff these variations for some reason and they just get ignored and I feel like those variations aren't going to be used a year from now at all and that's a big disappointment to me personally because I feel like they buffed a bunch of variations that didn't necessarily need buff like imposter it didn't really need that buff in my opinion Fucking ninjutsu oh my gosh yeah, cutthroat kano is no oh my one gosh don't oh man kano that. pisses me off dude i mean he might be like top five now he's absolutely ridiculous so many 50 50s that lead to 50 percent plus damage like safe advancing move like it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous oh the kano community is the biggest group of babies that was ever babies they drive a lot, me of, a lot of kanos felt like cybernetic overall needed more buffs than cutthroat and then they nerfed back one which makes no sense it's like <laughs> what Hi. they gave him, nah. a, six, they gave him yeah. a six frame uh up laser but it's like why would you use that over back one it's there's no reason it's like i just their balancing changes just really rubbed me the wrong way my and Overall, I think the game will probably be better, but for different reasons. Like, I just obviously it's good that like the hard, the ridiculous characters got nerfed pretty hard, so we're gonna see more variety in top eights. But I'm not. I would really hope that this is not the end of the patching because I think there's still a lot of that needs to be done. But that's just me. Well, I think you bring up a super good point about the how they're afraid to buff certain characters. I think about a lot when I'm trying to sleep at night. What the fuck did Paulo see in, in the testing that made him so scared to buff Unbreakable? What did he see Unbreakable do where he was like, the world can never know? Like, that's what I think about all the time. So stuff like that, man, like, I, I don't get it. Yeah. I don't. And uh, you guys all know I'm butthurt about Breakers now. I hate the fact yeah. that. Oh, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say that's a – the breaker change really hurt Bo as well because they can basically just break and he has to redo that all over again where he has to just have to run in, do it. It's like an endless cycle. Like I said, it's just insane. But anyways, go on. Well, no. I mean just like – I think people keep assuming like the comeback situation is going to be in their favor. Like they're getting bodied and they can buy themselves some space, but they're not thinking about the other way around. They're not thinking about what if I'm getting bodied and the other person has full life. If that's the case and they have two meters, you will never get the momentum again in the match. Yeah. Ever. And that just and drives you know, me nuts. Yeah. With the time change, that makes it more likely for you to lose anyway because they can just run and sit there and you can't do anything. It's like now that I think about it, the breaker change was – kind of worse like i don't really like it as much now because it it overall buffed the zoners but it also made like just comebacks in general a lot harder to do especially now that the time change is so fast like you can just sit there and turtle and it's really i think it's gonna change the game a lot in the long run yeah i just uh and some characters who were already good like, aren't going to be affected by it. Like, Tanya already has really good mobility. Reptile already has really good mobility. He doesn't really need stamina to get in. So, yeah. you know, one whiff dash, he's in the mid-range again, you know? So stuff like... Yeah. Just philosophically, I don't ever believe a fighting game should punish the, the opponent for having a successful setup or for tagging a, the opponent or for getting a conversion. I should never be punished for that, you know? Which yeah. is why I hate the wager system, but... Yeah. That's where we're at. Um, Django, any thoughts on XL? Do you think this is the future? Do you think this is going to make the <laughs> game this is amazing? The future. <laughs> uh, the future is now. The future and is now, yes. So is XL. I, you know, I'm going to play it. I'm definitely going to play it. And <laughs> it's going it's, it's to be, it's gonna be a thing that happens for a while. Man, listen, I don't care if, I mean, it would suck more. But if all the fucking characters in Combat Back 2 were... I was trying to think of a really shitty guest character. Leatherface? No, like, like Chucky. If they were oh, all okay. for Chucky, <laughs> but it still came with the net code, I would still be happy. If Brad Dorf was the voice of Chucky, I'd make a secondary out of, out of him like that's... Okay, well, you do you, man, okay? Yeah, I'm going to do me. I'm going to do fine. me hard. All right. I mean, don't you feel like the net code, as good as it is, like, 
I'm just feeling like even though like the netcode is so much better, I don't know if I'm gonna stick with it because of just I waited a year for that while playing it, and now it's well, like that's another the thing. Like I'm gonna. I want to play it more because I'm. I don't. I, I'm. I'm not gonna get mad at the fucking game or lag. So if I yeah, if, unless if, you're yeah. if I lose or if I'm doing whatever, then it's like it, it's way more okay, and I'm probably gonna like it because I'm like, oh man, they did something interesting there, or oh that character is whack, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, but still like it's and the the other thing is like with the netcode now and I get the characters in, you got that's fine. I kind of want it to just sit at some point soon for a little while without too much changes and just see where, where people take the game because as we've seen over and over again like there's with all these characters and these variations people's gonna take it and un unearth some shitty thing let me just eat my mouth while i'm trying to talk here you know they pull out some weird stuff with some weird ass variations and whatnot and now you don't really need that with these new characters because yeah, weird shit around on Front Street, Triborg. Yeah. But no, yeah, I just want to play. I want to play the game. I haven't played the game that much at all. I've played it once since XL came out. So with the netcode and all that shit, I want to play yeah. it. And hopefully, it's not still like patch crazy. Yeah. Fix some things that need it, but I kind of want to see what people do with the game more than I want to see what Netherrealm wants to do with the game. I would agree with that. I think yeah. that's fair. At that least is... not yet. Yeah, it's too early. I think. Yeah, final round will be interesting. Um, that'll be very telling. Um, I yeah. think no matter what happens, it'll be entertaining because I, if it's all you know, Cyber Sub Zeros, I'll be laughing my ass off. So I can't lose at this point. Um, I'm expecting a lot of Triborg in general, though. He's by, he's by far the most popular of the four. Yeah, and I would love to see if, if it's all different Triborgs in top eight. That would be really interesting. Yeah. You know, the gauntlet of Triborgs, you I want to see some some of those uh, dive kick brutalities. It's so much fun. You get the drone out, and you do, the like, the 17% overhead dive kick. It's so much fun. Yeah. So much fun. Doesn't he slide on them? Like, uh, yeah, you become, like, a MP fucking skateboard right Lawrence. across the fucking stage. It's awesome. That's a... He, Sub-Zero had that throw in MK, uh, DA, Deadly Alliance. He, Did like, he? slid on them. Yeah, he slid on them, like, a... Uh, Skateboard is pretty cool. Man, I can't times. even think back that far. It's like a surfing pose to me, so I want someone to, like, Photoshop the MK3 animality shark, like, right behind them. Like, that would be <laughs> so sick to me. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm optimistic. I think the online's brilliant. I do want to play more. Um, You know, me and Redman have been playing a bunch, and before yeah. that, me and Django had a super good set. Uh, we played it's never had a good set. It's never happened. <laughs> it was gooder. It was the goodest. It was good. At some set. point, though, I have to go back and do my fucking homework. Like, I never <laughs> actually learned Grandmaster. I, I can do some shit that is, you know, gimmicky and whatever, but whenever, like, it actually comes time to do damage or do a conversion or whatnot, I still don't know the character that well. No, and that's like I the know. thing with MKX. Like, I'm looking, every time I go to the roster, I'm like, fuck, there's so many characters that I actually kind of want to yeah. play. Like, I kind of want to play Stig... But Raicho, I kind of want to play fucking Hammer Leatherface, you know? And I still want to play Goro, and I still want to play Kung Jin a little bit, and I still want to play Aaron Black. It's a crazy game. It's never... Like, there's so many characters in this game that I actually want to play. I don't usually have that problem with fighting games, but... Well, that's yeah. when your Grandmaster makes me so fucking salty is because you're bodying me, <laughs> and then you're like, for your bread and butter combo, you're doing like freeze, forward, three, three. Right, forward, three, three. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, I'm getting my ass kicked. It's okay. One day, I'll actually be able to play that character. Maybe. Oh, just, oh, man. Well, you know how I feel about that matchup. That matchup hurts my soul. Cryo versus Grandmaster. Why, man. All you gotta do is be more patient. Then you make another clone, and then I, it just, you just build meter. I'm just watching you build meter with a stethoscope. Just fucking, I don't that think, doesn't I, make any I, sense. I, but. I, I think it's just a matter of patience. I know the MKX has a weird relationship with patience, but it's, it's interesting, man. I literally can't do anything without meter once that clones out. It's either fucking, like, waiting room... Or, 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 and it's still, you have, you still have options. Even while I'm waiting, you can still do things, you know, with your hands and your legs and your freezes. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Or you could just get up close and do your happy Gilmore fucking golf swing. <laughs> like, come on, man. Yeah, that is true. But come on. that only goes so far, man. It goes pretty far, but it, it only goes, goes pretty so far. far. And does a healthy amount of damage, too. That fucking shit. <laughs> Well, that's all I got, guys. Any final thoughts? 
Yeah, they, everyone should play it. Just fucking play it, man. <laughs> you gotta, it. Even if you didn't get any of these crazy new characters, you gotta fucking stage and brand new beautiful netcode. Use it. They should have made more stages. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Stage fatalities are cool. We haven't talked about that on another cast either. Yeah, stage fatalities are good. I was kind of disappointed like Sky Temple didn't get one or the jungle. Yeah, they had the snake in the jungle. Like, yeah. I was so hoping that in the jungle, you would fucking uppercut your opponent in the sky and the snake would bust out a gun and start shooting you. Like, that would be so <laughs> sick, but it didn't happen. It was not a thing, but... I I'm glad that thing. NRS yeah. seems to like the cove as much as I do. I love that stage. <laughs> I love They're giving everything yeah. to that stage. I like it. I, 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 yeah, that's a good stage. I also like I think... the Netherrealm one, whatever that's called. Crossroads? Crossroads. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's not as good as the cove, but I kind of expected there to be a, a pit-type something there, but... Eh, yeah. Whatever. I just have my own head cannon where the Kraken is trying to save you from your opponent, but he does it so violently you die. Like, <laughs> he's actually your friend. He doesn't mean to hurt you, but <laughs> he can't see shit. So he's throwing you against the dock, against the rocks, and he squeezes out of love. He squeezes out of love. It should but... be like an Aquaman connection. <laughs> that would be so sick. <laughs> Aquaman uppercut out of the water like Sector. It's World Combat, though, so it has to be Jason Momoa's Aquaman. Yep. He's got tattoos. <laughs> Video yeah, games, go play them, people. Come on, man. They're fun. Are there any finaler thoughts? Um, I, th I think that's it. I just wanted to say, uh, I think it's, uh, I wonder about final round. I wonder if um, if a lot of DLC gets in the top eight, if people will think like, oh, they just people just didn't know the matchup. That's why they made it in the top eight, if that's going to be a thing. Of course it will, man. Excuses all day. Yeah, Honestly, that is though, is it a, that's what's so, and that's why I never want Perfect Legend to win never anything. Is it a fair he's point so though? Good like, excuses. If you get beaten against something you didn't lab, like, do you think people have enough time to study every single variation, every character? To wouldn't it be like shitty for you to go into a match and just get destroyed by like some alien bullshit that you didn't know what? No, because everybody else is on the same page. With like, something like CEO, I would agree when it's like a patch change. Um, yeah. With this, I think it's important that, I mean, I, I realize we're kind of sacrificing final round on the altar, but I kind of want all the dirt out there now. I kind of want to yeah. see where all the fucked up shit is now. So all the other tournaments can be better, you know? Um, yeah. But you're right, though. You bring up a good point because final round to me... Final round 2012 was the true beginning of MK9 to me. That's when MK9 truly became the creature that it was finally stayed as for the rest of its life. You know, that that's when everything truly began. Everything before yeah. that was kind of like scrub jumping, you know, and bread and butters and like smoky yeah. smoke smoke. I never did that in MK9. I don't know what you're talking about. First year of, uh, <laughs> first year of MK9 was awful. It was... Uh, if you go back and watch that Evo, it's just the worst thing ever. No, no, it looks like absolute trash. Yeah. And that's why Perfect Legend won, is because he played a character who didn't have to learn the game. Like, you don't have to play Mortal Kombat if you play Kung Lao on MK9. So. You guys think uh, this game is kind of harder to change, I guess, because it's easier to find tech and the. I guess because of the access to frame data, it's easy to learn the game better i mean nothing really everything like that is in the game now has pretty much been learned from like the first month of the game besides the new dlc and stuff i think the run button has a lot to do with it too everyone can bridge the gap now no one gets stuck in their you know in their little invisible cage that the developers put them in yeah you know um mm -hmm. that run button does wonders for a lot of the low tier especially now that the run got better for people like goro and stuff like that yeah so. No one is Barakatir in this game. Everyone seems everyone has their own dirt, I think, but it's just certain variations don't have that dirt, and that's why there's always going to be like that one better variation overall. Even even Unbreakable, you know, if you eat a blocked jump in punch, you have to guess between back two and back three, and that's a big yeah. deal. You know, you don't want to be wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. I mean, even in the corner game, even without the clone. You still have to guess upon wake up or jump out because, you know, if you guess wrong, just that's the beauty of MKX. I think MKX is a really good game because of stuff like that. So, yeah, 
Yeah, uh, and yeah of course, definitely. <laughs> I mean, obviously. Come on. So, yeah. yeah. Is there anything else? That's all I Can got. Well, I got to actually leave my house soon, so we should probably okay. wrap up. All right. <laughs> Well, then but in that case, the finalist of thoughts. God damn it! No, there's no more thoughts. <laughs> We've covered everything. Jesus Christ! We gotta shut this shit down. Uh, guys, play video games. Thanks for listening. Is there anything else? No, I'm not asking you guys that any question again. We already did that. Uh, yeah, just say bye, everybody. Take care, everyone. Bye. Fuck Leatherface. <laughs> <laughs>